Hello and welcome to the PHNX d podcast right here on PHNX. My name is Derek Montia, occasionally known as the mayor of PHNX, and this show is brought to you by the fine folks at the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Go download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Go do it. New users, use our code of PHNX, and for betting $1 on any team to score in any NFL game, you'll get $100 in free bets instantly should they do that thing, should they score some points. And uh, I, I don't know. After watching the Buffalo Bills versus the New England Patriots game last night, I am now sketchy on whether or not teams can necessarily score points. Uh, I am joined, of course, by my vice mayor, my friend, my co-host, the one and only infamous Thunderstick, Jesse Friedman. Wow, you said all those positive things, and then you had to throw the word infamous. Yeah, in well, there. I, okay. I, I had to let people know. <laughs> I had to let people know. I mean, there's in some circles... Uh, you may or may not be infamous, but how are you wow. in the Pacific Northwest <laughs> right now, sir? Well, I was good up, up until so when you when you made that very cryptic comment. Uh, ah, but... You know, <laughs> all, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is uh, we're going to question some contracts today, and I, I might question sure. yours. That's all I'm saying is yours might come <laughs> okay. into question as well. Uh, but you know, we I wanted to talk about the very very little. Uh, MLB news that we have before we get on to the main topic. Sure. Uh, a, a lot of the discussions as of late have been around managerial hirings, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the Mets reportedly are scheduled to interview six different individuals for the manager job. Uh, same with the Oakland A's uh, to interview six for the manager job. Uh, that's which is which is just kind of funny to me because I just got done watching Moneyball today and. I, I don't know. I feel like I know the inside and out of the Oakland A's organization better uh, than than ever. After at least a at least on you know film. the ins and outs of it from twenty years ago. <laughs> two thousand. <laughs> oh, that's twenty years ago. Damn it. Two thousand two. Yeah, two thousand two. Yes, yeah. that takes place in that. Yes, absolutely in that time frame. And oh man, now uh, I feel real old. But makes me. Uh, <laughs> you know what this makes me thankful for is it makes me thankful for the Arizona Diamondbacks having their entire coach search, their coaching hiring process yeah. completed before we got to this point in the CBA negotiations and the lockout with MLB. Yeah, I think I think that was a good call on their on their front, getting that getting that done and out of the way. Um, it's just a really weird time right now in baseball, obviously, right? Like it's gotten to the point where players can't even work with their trainers. Um, that they're used to working with like it's a very weird time across it's the board odd. yeah definitely and what can and can't happen right like basically no actual baseball things can happen but uh you know from per sources and reports and things that are coming out teams are still like lining things up for when this lockout ends that at yeah. least gives me a little bit of hope because it makes me feel like obviously you have to prepare it, it's the only thing you can do there's there's not much for you to do as a manager or as a GM during this period of time, other than to try to game plan for when the lockout ends. It just still gives me uh, a little bit of hope that this is going to end sooner than later. I hope so, Derek. I hope so. January 28th. I'm, I'm, st I'm sticking to <laughs> you it. You with that I'm date. To it. Valentine's Day, baby. You know, but anyway. We are, uh, uh, what is that? 31. We are. We are uh, 52 are days, days away, 52 yeah. days away, Derek, from mm -hmm. the end of the lockout. There you go. Yeah. Well, uh, we're, we're what? We're uh, like 19 days or wait, no, I'm sorry, 18 days away from Christmas. So just we are, which is equally there, crazy. Yeah, that's equally crazy. Yes. Uh, I want to uh, rub it in everybody's face that all of my Christmas shopping is complete. Uh, in fact, oh my I have gosh. presents wrapped underneath the tree and in boxes out to ups already so um suck it uh my my goal in life is to steal everybody's christmas spirit and you know make it all my own basically so that's why i try to get such an early <laughs> jump on it also i am terrible when it comes to stress jesse i can't i can't get stressed out over presents and the holiday season yeah I need stressed to out it. christmas shopping is unfortunate because it's you wind worst. up you wind up just getting everyone like things that you can get them that they'll kind of like but not really what they actually want Bingo. that's usually the situation i find myself in Absolutely. but i have to admit derek i come from a family where uh, my parents bought those like fake christmas gifts 
you know, like those things that they kind of, they kind of like look like gifts and they're, and they appear to be wrapped and like, there's something inside of them, but there's actually nothing in them. They're just like empty placeholder boxes. And we put them under the tree because no one in my family really buys any gifts or at least nobody in my family wraps any gifts before <laughs> like 11 AM on Christmas day. And so <laughs> we just, we just fill the tree oh. with all of these fake gifts and yeah. it makes it feel like the Christmas season throughout December, even when none of us have actually started on our Christmas shopping yet. So I, oh, I yeah. applaud, I applaud that. And it also gives me an anxiety attack to think about. Uh, yeah. You probably wouldn't do so well in Christmas. my family. I, yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. We do. I wouldn't. That's but, what we do. Uh, I understand what you're saying. I understand the panic shop feeling, you know, it's what we talked about. Some teams kind of seemed to do in free agency prior to, to the end of the CBA and the lockout happening. It seemed like some teams kind of were just trying to grab that last minute gift, you know, before they went to the Christmas Eve family gathering. Uh, uh, And that's the best way I can compare today's main topic is that at one point, the (laughs) Arizona Diamondbacks must have absolutely been panic shopping uh, with a few days left before Christmas. With all of the historically bad free agency, now there's not that many because we haven't been around that. There's long. not well, that many. That yeah. many, but I do want to uh, cover some of these topics uh, over the next few weeks since we have the time and the ability to do so in a new segment that we're calling Snake Charmer. Snake Charmer. <laughs> I need that. I need that back up. Let's get that back up there one more time. Oh wow, we're fighting back and forth. I, I'm not used to working with a producer, so shout out to Aaron for being here and helping us out. Uh, yeah, look at that. So we're going to talk in our Snake Charmer segment about a, a few of the free agency contracts that the Arizona Diamondbacks sign that have been uh, become a bit infamous, just like Jesse Friedman in the Pacific Northwest. Yes. Right, uh, right. A, a, as far as you know, their purpose and, and what the end result actually was. So uh, as suggested by today's title... We are going to cover on today's show uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks signing of Russ Ortiz. Uh, the his, man, the myth, the legend. Historically known. Historically <laughs> known for being right one of the worst contracts, uh, one of or in the running for the worst contract the Arizona Diamondbacks have ever made. And this topic came up uh, based on a tweet from our Mr. Infamous himself, Jesse Friedman. Uh, who tweeted out the other day, do you ever just wonder how Russ Ortiz, Russ Ortiz was given 22 starts for the 2005 D-backs when he was this bad? 115 innings pitched, 147 hits allowed, 92 <laughs> runs, 88 earned runs, 65 walks, 46 strikeouts, a 6.89 <laughs> ERA, a, a one... That can't, that just can't be right. A 1.84 <laughs> whip. A 1.84 whip. Yeah. Uh, that's 19 more walks than strikeouts and an 8.3% strikeout rate. What? Uh, and that's that's how Jesse ended his tweet with the what at the end. I tried to emphasize it with both the exclamation point and the question mark as Jesse. Right. You did, you did a pretty good job. Thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, a, what a crazy stat. What a crazy situation when you think of that obviously a lot of people that have watched this team for a long time are well aware of how bad uh, the 2005 slash partial 2006 season was for Russ Ortiz as an Arizona Diamondback uh, right. but it it does arguably go down as one of the worst contracts in in history right yeah, it was um it was I have the numbers here. It was 4 years and 33 million that the Diamondbacks gave to Russ Ortiz, which with those kind of numbers, it's not exactly yeah. what you're uh, not exactly what you what you're looking for. I am dumbfounded by Russ Ortiz, Derek, because as you've alluded to, uh based on what we were talking about before coming on the air and based on what you've uh written in our little show rundown here, Russ Ortiz had some very good seasons in his time in the major leagues. Correct. Right. Which is, which is kind of dumbfounding that he actually had good seasons. And then he came to the diamondbacks and did what he did. What's weird to me is that he never really struck out that many guys. Now, now 2005, of course, this was the, 
worst season uh, of his career, but he never really was a big strikeout guy. And his walk rate was always kind of high too, even in yes. his good seasons. Right. So in yeah. some ways I'm kind of just dumbfounded how Russ Ortiz ever managed, uh, you know, to be an all-star in 2003, which apparently he was, and to put together some actually pretty good seasons when I'm not really sure what aspect of his game was working for him. His ground ball rate isn't very high. He didn't really strike anyone out. His walk rate was kind of high. I think Russ Ortiz might have just gotten lucky for a few seasons. It, it's it's a really interesting situation with this guy. Well, if you were an Arizona Diamondback fan from the beginning, you got a strong dose of Russ Ortiz for a long time before yeah. he became a member of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, Russ Ortiz pitched in, in Major League Baseball from 1998 to 2007. Then he had a little bit of a resurgence and a comeback in 2009 and 2010. Uh, and then he ended his career. So as far as a starting pitcher goes, a uh, pretty good career, right? Yeah, you know, he as was far as around goes, for a while. Yeah. Uh, you know, ends his career with a 4.51 ERA and uh, 113 wins. So overall, a pretty solid career, right? As far as those numbers are concerned, nothing uh, Hall of Fame worthy or anything like that. But at the same time, somebody who established himself over a number of years. What's odd is how the wheels completely fell off for Russ Ortiz once he joined the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, yeah. When I say when I say he was a, you know, a thorn in our side, he was a San Francisco Giant from 1998 to 2002. So we got a lot of Russ Ortiz. I hated his face. I hated seeing yeah. his face. Uh I couldn't stand him. He was just a really good pitcher. He won a lot of games and uh, just again, not it, not anybody that was highly coveted or talked about, but somebody that seemed to do well against us. And again, somebody that was just a division rival that over the years you, you grow to hate, you know, you just grow to have a yeah. different level of hatred. Well, especially, like that. especially a guy like him, because like I said, I just can't pinpoint how he was ever effective to begin with. Like there's no, there's no really compelling aspect of his game. He didn't get ground balls. He didn't really have a whole lot of swing and miss in his game. It doesn't make sense why Russ Ortiz was as effective as he was for those few years. And, and that's what kind of makes you mad as a, as an, as a fan of an opposing team, right? When, when some team that you're rooting against, has this guy who like yeah. manages to stifle you and <laughs> yeah. it doesn't make sense why like he just didn't have the pitches that you think would would lend itself to that and so that i mean i was only i wasn't old enough to remember those days uh, at the time but um but nonetheless i mean it's it's crazy i'm sure what it must have been like as a fan watching the diamondbacks go down to a guy like russ ortiz from time to time well, let's just say if I had the DraftKings Sportsbook app back then, I wouldn't have bet on the Diamondbacks when Russ Ortiz was pitching against them. And that, I feel like, is a perfect segue for me to remind you that you can use uh, our code of PHNX over at the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Uh, get one. I'm, I'm complimenting my own segues now. This is you a are, different you level are, of meta. Yeah. Uh, but for $1... You can bet on any team to score, and you'll get $100 in free bets instantly. Just a reminder, baseball season isn't happening right now. Nothing's happening in baseball, in fact. So we can't claim that DraftKings is the sports betting partner of the MLB because we don't know if that'll be part of the CBA or not. But they are the official sports betting partner of the NFL. And just a reminder that you can get in like I get in with the same game parlays. Uh, you can bet m more legs and get more money, and it's that simple. Uh, I will give you a little sample of some of the stuff I like to do. You can go in there. Once you get into the same game parlay, you just bet against the quarterbacks to do things. Like, I felt like an idiot on PHNX Bets this week because I didn't take into consideration the weather on this week's Monday Night Football game. Yeah. And the minute that our pal Shane Diefen Locke, which is what I'm going to call him at all times from now on, uh, reminded me of that. I realized how stupid, how stupid my, my picks were this week. Uh, and I should have gone the opposite way of everything I chose. So you can use factors like that to add all sorts of uh, legs to your parlay, like betting against Mac Jones to have more than what, three completions? 
What an <laughs> asshole. I somehow was bet that... for him to have over 200 yards. I look like a fool. <laughs> was that game in Buffalo? Is that where it uh, was? I... Yeah, yeah. I think Unless it probably was. was. It was Buffalo it in matter. December is a Awful. nasty, nasty place. Awful. I, I, look, I used to live in Syracuse, and it took one winter for me oh. to leave Syracuse and never come back ever again, <laughs> ever live there. Uh, it's very close to Buffalo, too. So, yeah. Uh, let me tell you. But again, when you're on the DraftKings Sportsbook app, take all of that into consideration, all of those can all of those factors and all of those variables, and then you make yourself a solid bet using one of those same game parlays. They also have uh, offers on uh, same game parlay insurance up to twenty five dollars. So make sure you get in on that offer as well. Make sure to opt into that prior to making your bet, and then go bet. And if your parlay doesn't work out, you get a free twenty five dollar bet for you to do another parlay. DraftKings is safe, secure, reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Remember that code is PHNX to get one dollar uh, to bet one dollar on any team to score and win one hundred dollars in free bets should they score uh, for new customers only. 21 and over, Arizona only. Gambling problem, dial 1-800-NEXT-STEP. New customers only. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. And Jesse, I, I want to get into uh, Russ Ortiz's pre d career and uh, d backs career here a little bit. Uh, and I'm talking about specifically right before and when he became a d back So coming into uh, this this deal with the Arizona Diamondbacks, uh, Russ Ortiz was an All Star in 2003, 21 and seven, and 34 starts with a 3.81 ERA in that season. Over 68 starts in two seasons for the Braves, 3.97 ERA, 292 strikeouts, uh, and I don't believe it was 14 that's, that's walks. Two, 214 walks. Two, 214 <laughs> walks. That is definitely missing from that graphic. Um, but yeah, like a 4.0 ERA overall in seven seasons with the Giants uh, and, and Atlanta. So one thing that you said in regards to that is what did they see in him or what was he doing well? I mean, I don't know what he was doing well, but he was consistent, right? Uh, e even if he walked a lot of guys, there was still that – uh, higher strikeout rate right and still the low era I mean, sort so of <laughs> he got he, he let guys get on but he didn't he, he he was able to get out of those situations essentially is what uh the the ridiculously high walks that you know in that time frame goes but when you talk about his time with the d-backs in 28 starts oh over two seasons <laughs> 7.02 era 67 strikeouts 87 walks uh, then released in June of 2006, being owed $22 million still on his $33 million contract with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Wow. So they paid him 11 when he was on the team, and then Correct. they paid him 22 after he left the team. Correct. Oh, my God. Yes. Um, again, that that part of it, I think, is why... It is widely considered to be one of the worst free agency moves in history. I think it's how short the time was here, how they still ended up owing him that money, and just everything that, that went down with that deal. The steep decline in his career the minute he became an Arizona Diamondback. And honestly, it's not even like once he left, he got things back on track, right? Yeah. I mean... He, he played for two more seasons before a hiatus. Uh, he went to the Baltimore Orioles, where his ERA ballooned up even higher to 8.48 ERA. Oh, uh, and then he went back to the Giants in 2007, where uh, things were a little bit more reasonable. He was 2-3 and three, uh, in 12 games uh, and 8 starts. He had a 5.51 ERA. Uh, he still, his... like, he wasn't good. Like, ever since he went to the Diamondbacks, he was not – Ever never good, good again. After that. Yeah, yeah, never good again. Just back down to not being as bad as he was once he became like once he went back to the Giants. You know, he had more strikeouts than walks. At least twenty-seven strikeouts uh, and twenty walks in in the two thousand seven season. That's like such a like such a low bar for success, though. Like I am, more strikeouts. Than I am just <laughs> flabbergasted though by these numbers going back. You know, to your tweet, right? I mean. Why would you start him for 22 games? 
Well, here's the thing that you fail might fail to remember, and I'm yeah. not, I'm not I'm, suggesting you I are. absolutely fail to remember. Please, 2004 was the worst season in our franchise's history. Right. So from that point, it was truly a rebuilding year. I'm sure at times people are going to look at the 2021 season and ask a lot of questions about it. That it, unless you lived through it and watched it, and you know were were invested in this team uh you might not really understand i hear a lot yeah. of things about the diamondbacks as a matter of fact sometimes it frustrates me because it seems like some of the most dedicated fans on twitter are the ones that are least understanding i'm not saying that they are least knowledgeable i'm saying they're least understanding of the d-back situation there's yeah. a lot of negativity thrown around anytime we bring up anything in regards to this team being better you know, obviously the Mark Melanson signing was kind of laughed at by a lot of people because why would you need a closer if you can't get a lead going into the ninth inning, right? I get it. There's just, I think, a lot that, you know, was so uh, close to really not being as, and now I'm just making excuses for this team, but there was so much that seemed like it was so close to not being as bad as this team really was this season. There sure. were so many games that felt like they should have gone in a different way. There were so many like just uh, kind of heart-wrenching moments where you thought the team was getting things back on track because, you know, oh, hey, like here, maybe they'll win multiple games in a row and then just another, you know, six runs put up in the fourth or fifth inning or a reliever blows it or whatever the case may be. And here we are back to losing multiple games in a row. It, it it was a ridiculous season to watch as far as putting guys out on the field. And I think that's kind of what 2005 mm -hmm. was about, was yeah. getting capable players out there to start. You could ask that all you want, but it was like he wasn't injured that season. He was able to go out there and pitch. So even though he wasn't good, they still needed guys to, you know, go out there. I, I, I I'm... I might be wrong about this, but wasn't Randy Johnson gone after the 2004 season? Yeah. Yeah. yeah this so, I mean, this was things they did after he left. Right. And this was seen as like the big, I think that was the problem was it was seen as the big move to replace <laughs> like the, Randy like the Johnson. changing of the guard from yeah. Randy, from Hall yeah. of Famer Randy Johnson to Russ Ortiz. <laughs> oh, poor Russ. And then he comes in. Oh. 6.89 ERA, 65 walks, 46 strikeouts. The strikeouts by far to me is the most shocking drop. Yeah, as 46 far as his statistics in a, go. In 115, it, I mean, that is not very many strikeouts. Well, I mean, when you look at Russ Ortiz's career, right? Uh, he led the league in walks twice. So him, <laughs> including his all-star season, when he was a Cy Young candidate and an, and an MVP candidate, that inexplicably. Is, yeah, what, won, what exactly he, happened in baseball in 2003 that well, that was he, possible? <laughs> he won 21 games that year, which yeah. led led the league. That's, That's what it was. It was. It was the, the voters, 21 wins. Voters 20 years ago loved the win statistic. The win. If a guy was a 20-game winner, <laughs> right. you were automatically in the Cy Young conversation. It didn't yep. really even matter what your other numbers were. I mean, that's he great, finished fourth place in the Cy Young conversation that year. That's ridiculous. <laughs> My goodness. But yeah, I think that what the Diamondbacks saw was a veteran coming over that had been consistent throughout his career and was kind of peaking with the Braves. I mean... 21 yeah. and 7 in 2003, 15 and 9 in 2004. And when you, when you had to play against the Braves several times like the Diamondbacks did, you probably got to see a lot more yet again of Russ Ortiz coming in and, and being very good against you. It's a tantalizing offer especially when you consider the longevity at, of his career at that point and how he when you look at his stats consistently got better. He really did. I mean, the season, 2004 was his, like, second, third highest ERA in his career. But prior to that, he had, you know, kept it under four the majority of the time. And then he had that all-star year and, you know, the year when he won 20, 21 games. I'm, I'm guessing, especially after watching entirely too much Moneyball today, uh, I'm guessing <laughs> a lot of it is that stuff that you see in that movie, right? The 
the feeling and the uh you know you're you're combining your experience with this and that and there's just a lot of stuff that even though there are red flags with someone like Russ Ortiz they still decided to give him at the time a, a very large contract which it's funny how laughable 33 million dollars is now uh for 4 years but back then that was uh quite a bit of money Jesse yeah that doesn't sound like much right now but yeah if you take into account inflation that's that's probably like a 50 you know 60 million dollar contract equivalent for for what we have today which is significant right i mean yeah. he wasn't paid like uh you know like an ace which is which is good the diamondbacks sure. kind of had a uh, a much bigger problem on their hand and on their hands if they'd gone out and given him 80 million or something but um but yeah it's like what john gray got yeah, something right, like that. With the something Rangers. Like that. Yeah, kind of a good middle of the rotation type starter that you, you know, see some some upside in, something like yeah. that. I think it was uh fifty six million in four years for John Gray. So I think that would probably be the equivalent to the Russ Ortiz deal. Um and you know, speaking of that, we've kind of talked about how much money the Rangers threw around and they have a lot of expectations to live up to for that same reason. You threw all that money around, uh now you you better be a lot better than you were uh, in order to justify spending half a billion dollars. I, yeah, I, I feel for Texas Rangers fans right now because <laughs> on, on one hand you're so excited, but I mean, we've seen teams win, you know, win free agency and then come out and have horrible seasons numerous times, right? The yep. Padres were a, have been a big example of this multiple times now, particularly a few years ago when they had Craig Kimbrell and, uh, you know, Melvin Upton Jr. and Matt Kemp and that whole uh, regime of Padres players. And they were a disaster, right? They were a mm -hmm. huge disaster. It didn't work. Uh, the Rangers are, I kind of put in a different category because I think people already recognize that the Rangers might be winning the winter. But I don't know if people are really expecting them to be that good uh, outside of the Rangers own organization. I'm sure their own fans have high expectations now, which is kind of why I worry for them. Um but yeah, they're a they're a franchise in an, in a curious position right now because they have these headliner names on their roster, but I just don't see they haven't they haven't even really won the winter yet in some ways because they've got a lot of other roster spots to fill other than just their middle infield. Well, it's interesting you bring that up because I read a CBSSports.com article recently by R.J. Anderson where he uh, graded all of the uh, free agency uh, off, uh, off season moves for the teams. And uh, I will honestly say there's no way that I could <laughs> assess the rosters of other teams well enough to do this for all of the teams in baseball, uh, like our man, Mr. Anderson did. But uh, I did find it particularly, in particularly interesting that the, uh, Arizona Diamondbacks got a, a C grade for their moves, which again is actually a little bit for, higher for than Mark, I, for Mark Melanson, Melanson and, and Jordan Luplo. Yep. Okay. Uh, and they said both will make the Diamondbacks a little better than they were last season. That's about the long and short of it. Right. And so I think the Diamondbacks haven't lost much to say that they didn't do a good job, you know, in free agency. There's not this, uh, they can't go any lower than they went, but a couple of teams can like the Rockies and the Dodgers, which were both given uh D grades in our, uh, yeah, they lost division some, so far. They lost some players. So some key players, right? So it's, uh, it's going to be interesting how all that shakes out. And once we get through this ridiculous lockout situation, we can get back to some free agency happenings. But for now, what we can be thankful for is that the Arizona Diamondbacks did not make a Russ Ortiz quality move this free agency offseason. Um, well, and let's, let's hope so, Derek. Let's, well, okay. All right. Knock on wood. <laughs> um, what am I doing here? We haven't even played baseball yet. Uh, I will say this, though. Uh, you can find out some more information. We're going to have some uh, articles on gophnx.com. I'm going to write a little bit more about how this CBA, the new CBA, could impact the Diamondbacks uh, shifting their draft position and hopefully when we talk about that we mean shifting up back to the number one draft pick so uh go over to gophnx.com become a member you can become an annual member and you'll either get uh, uh you um you will you will get a membership 
but you also get a free t-shirt over at the phnxlocker.com. Go check out the phnxlocker.com. By the way, if you haven't, <coughs> I, excuse me, um, I love our t-shirts. I've talked about them on the show before. Uh, the Coyotes keep coming out. The Coyotes uh, lose entirely too many games to have as cool of t-shirts as they have on <laughs> PHNX Locker. That's all I'm saying. I'm not well, making go, any let's wild Let's don't hold that against us too, Derek. We'll, Here's, we'll yeah, no, I, you're right. You're right. But I'll say this. Uh, Petey deserves all the shirts. So sure. Petey makes up uh, Craig Morgan eating a hot dog with ketchup and Petey uh, somehow storming the studio over uh, and <laughs> declaring war against the PHNX Sun Show by far makes him the MVP. He, he might be the mayor of PHNX now. I don't know, but um, go become a member. If you don't want to become an annual member, you can become a month to month member and you'll get your first month for just 50 cents. Uh, so go do that. Go do that now. Jesse, uh, you have any final thoughts on Russ Ortiz and this I terrible do. contract? I do. So this is something that I commented uh, on my original tweet. So some people may have seen this, but I think it's it kind of puts this into perspective. So we talked about the staggering strikeout numbers, just 46 strikeouts in 115 innings, just how uh, how absurdly low that, that number is, right? And uh, I think what really puts it into perspective for me, Derek, is if you go, uh, if you look at uh, his strikeout rate, his strikeout rate was at 8.3% that season, right? We mentioned that earlier, which is, uh, which is tremendously low. Major League average is usually about 21, 22%, something in that range. And, and Russ Ortiz's that season in which he pitched 115 innings was about one third of that at 8.3%. Matt Peacock, Derek, on the Diamondbacks, who is not exactly known as a strikeout artist. He's, he's a guy who gets fewer strikeouts than just about anyone on the Diamondbacks pitching staff. Uh, he's more of a ground ball guy, right? That's how he gets his outs. Matt Peacock had a 13% strikeout rate last season, <laughs> which is almost twice what Russ Ortiz's was when he made 22 starts. So there you go. Matt there. Peacock. My, Matt oh Peacock had a 13% strikeout rate. They're both, I mean, yeah, Major I don't League Average is in the Matt 20s. Peacock like that. I'm laughing at Russ Ortiz is really what I'm laughing well, and, at. Well, and Matt Peacock, in his defense, Matt Peacock gets ground balls. His ground right, ball rate I mean. was almost 60%. So yeah. that's how, I mean, Matt Peacock is still, you know, sort of a work in progress. But you can understand how he could get some outs. Russ Ortiz never had a ground ball rate above 50%, and it was usually in the low 40s. And so the, I don't understand, Derek. I don't understand not only why did the Diamondbacks make this move in the first place, but how on earth was this man an all-star and finished in top five voting in the Cy Young Award? It makes Jesse, absolutely no sense. Jesse, 21 wins. 21 wins. That's literally the only number, That's it. which is why I'm so That's glad it. that voters are more informed now because that is such a stupid argument to put a guy top five in the Cy Young voting just because of that. Led the league in walks that year, by the way. Yeah, Led the yeah. League Badge of honor. Walks. There you go. <laughs> well, you can follow us all on Twitter. Russ Ortiz is at OU Russ. Uh, I am at Cap <laughs> underscore Caveman with a K. Yeah. Jesse is at Jesse N. Friedman. Our show is at PHNX underscore D-backs. But of course, all roads lead to at PHNX underscore sports. That is on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, if you're listening right now on your favorite audio podcasting app, Please leave us a five-star review. This guy over here is a five-star man. Uh, also, uh, subscribe. Then jump over to YouTube. Subscribe there. If you're listening, watching us on YouTube, do the opposite thing. Go over to your favorite podcasting app. Subscribe over there. Uh, make sure to sign up for notifications on YouTube. That way you don't miss any of this content that we have coming out. It comes out all the time. Crazy hours. Sometimes, uh, you know, Craig Morgan needs to get on uh, at 1130 at night and complain about the Coyotes. You need to be there for that. So make sure you don't miss those <laughs> notifications uh, or the Suns. They're going to get, you know, I'll tell you this much. If you didn't watch the Cardinals this weekend, you missed us stealing Saul Bookman's uh, very expensive bottle yeah. of scotch and drinking it in celebration yeah. of the Arizona Cardinals victory over the <laughs> Chicago Cubs. So you don't want to miss any of this. Why would you want to miss any of this? So sign up for notifications. You won't miss a minute of it. Um, again, become a member over at gophnx.com and use our code of PHNX over at the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Uh, we appreciate you guys listening so much and watching uh, on behalf of Jesse and myself. We thank you so much. And remember, kids, baseball is fun, but it's so much more fun when they get back to playing baseball. Oh.